beating Manhattan in the other semifinal game. Well, hi again, everybody. I'm Barry Landers along with Whitey Rigney. Sports of March Madness. Albany has the fever up here, Whitey, and what a big doubleheader we have coming up tonight. We certainly do, Barry. First game is going to be Siena and LaSalle Explorers, a terrific matchup year in and year out in this league. Later on, we'll have Manhattan and Iona, so it's going to be a fun night. We take a look at the brackets and see how these teams got here. You can see that uh, yesterday was a tremendous effort for Siena coming up with a big victory. Yeah, they had a, a blowout victory, as did LaSalle, really, against Fairfield. Siena's was a little different because Bruce Schroeder, as we talked about on and off throughout the week, have, is hobbled with a bad ankle. Well, Bruce Schroeder is certainly a key to this Siena ball club. Twice they defeated LaSalle earlier this season. And why do you look at Siena? What are the keys for them to do well tonight? Well, they need to play defense. They need to play real good defense. And Bruce Schroeder is a key guy for them. He was a point on their press. And if he can play, and sometimes the second day after you hurt your ankle is the worst day. He played 19 hard minutes last night. On the point of that press, he has to work harder than anyone else. Well, the two times that uh, LaSalle was beaten this year by Siena, Randy Woods was held in check. Shot very poorly. How about Randy Woods tonight coming off yesterday's performance? Well, Randy Woods certainly is not the darling of the crowd. He's the crowd's anti-hero. They really go after him yesterday. Every time he got the ball, they yelled, shoot. Had 42 points against Fairfield. Terrific effort. Has no range on his shot. He can move out further and further and further. And, and the thing Bruce Schroeder helps with their team defense. He would never be matched up with Woods, but he helps as a team concept. Well, Speedy Morris, despite his team winning big, wasn't all that pleased with his team's play yesterday. Well, Speedy Morris, <laughs> he's never going to be too happy until he plays in the final game of the season. But I think Speedy Morris is pleased that he's in this game. You can't win the championship until you win the first round, and now you can't win the championship until you win the semifinal. Well, LaSalle last year was beaten by eventual champion St. Peter's in the semifinals, and in their final year of the MAC Conference, they're hoping to win the championship. We'll be back with more from the Knickerbock Arena in just a moment. Mike Basketball is brought to you by Marine Midland Bank. Let's work it out together. Why Minolta and their totally automatic Freedom Zoom compact cameras. Choose Freedom to Zoom. And by the New York State Lottery. Hey, you never know. Why does Marine Midland work so well for so many? You can talk to us. Talk savings with Lynn Welch. Her interest has helped hundreds earn more interest. Education, see Linda Gilbert. She's put 1,300 kids through college, including two of her own. It's not just billions in assets or hundreds of branches that make us what we are. Marine people do it so well because they do it so much. So let's work it out together. See Bill Ryan. He spent the last five years thinking retirement for folks like these. We were all tied up on the Delacour case, unable to identify the mystery blonde. Luckily, Louie was back, a Freedom Zoom kid. With Minolta's unique eye start, Freedom starts zooming before it even meets your eye. So, when you can't get to the picture, Freedom zooms the picture to you. And fast. Shoot! Look at this. It's our secretary. Looks like she takes more than dictation. Americans choose the Freedom to Zoom. Only from the mind of Minolta. Admiral and Lady Billingsley of Devonshire. Lord and Lady Atherton of Sussex. Sir Alfred and Lady Sheffield of Dunsmore. And Bob of Buffalo. New York Lotto. Hey, you never know. Nobody Beats the Wiz is so sure that our prices are the best, we offer our customers this challenge. Bring in an ad from any competitor showing their price is lower than ours, and we'll beat that price. Plus, give you 10% of the difference in price, or it's yours free. No ifs, ends, or buts about it. It's guaranteed. That's what we call mistake-proof shopping. When we say Nobody Beats the Wiz, we mean it. The Kings take on the Whalers, live Wednesday at 7.30 Eastern on Sports Channel America. Back at the Knickerbock Arena, big crowd filing in for this first semifinal game that will see the homestanding Saints of Siena take on LaSalle. And we have standing by Dave Sims. Let's go to Dave, who will be joining us here for the second game. 
All right, thank you, Barry. One of the stories here for the LaSalle Siena game is the condition of Bruce Schroeder, the star for the Siena Saints. And joining us right now is the team orthopedist, Dr. Carl Worth. And Dr. Worth, give the folks at home an, ex uh, an idea of the type of treatment that Bruce Schroeder went through to get his ankle up to speed so he could play even minimally uh, in the ballgame tonight. Uh, he had a lot of things done to him. When he first got to the emergency room and after we got through with the x-rays, he we had to draw blood out of his ankle because he had that much collection in there. He's had uh, pressure dressings, ice contrast, electric stem. He's about everything we could throw at him. Actually, before he played last night, we, we kind of just did an informal tally. He probably had 17 hours of treatment uh, right on through the day and the night because he's very valuable to this team, and we like him as a person in addition, and we just went after it. He played uh, 19 minutes last night, partly on guts, but he did very well. And uh, we're hoping he can perform for us tonight, too. What types of things have you done for him uh, prior to the game, say, in the last uh, last couple of hours? Well, he, well, it's more than the last couple of hours. We had him in here since 10 o'clock this morning. We've been treating him since that time as well. Uh, what he's wearing now, however, is essentially a soft cast. Um, it's as if he were being treated in a normal fashion, but with the exception of the fact that we've got to have him a little bit of a little bit agile so that he can play this game. Uh, the cast that he's got on there is flexible enough that he can play, he can get a good jump, but not a great jump. What's his attitude? I mean, obviously it's gone call the fact that he's gone through 17, 18 hours continuous uh, uh, service, if you will, but talk about his attitude. His attitude is about as good as you can get in any athlete. Uh, first of all, when we were going around saying that he was doubtful, he was going around saying, I'm playing. <laughs> That's the first thing you got to know. The second thing you got to know is that uh, that he proved it. He proved it. Uh, we went after him. He did not argue for one minute about anything we asked him to do. He did everything just right, and he was ready to go when we asked him to go. We tried him out under the stands here last night. His agility was fair, not great, but once he got warmed up a little bit, he did very well. He had a much better morning this morning. Uh, right up, and we didn't make any decisions about exactly how we're going to treat him tonight, but we did that immediately before game time, and it looks like he's ready to go. All right. Good enough. Thank you for your time, and uh, maybe it'll work out for you. Who knows? Uh, for his sake, I hope so. All right, very good. Dr. Carl Worth, the team orthopedist for the Siena Saints. Let's get back to Barry and Whitey. Thank you very much, Dave. He is quite a young man, Bruce Schroeder. He played a total of 19 minutes last night, Whitey. Contributed 10 points, shooting three for five. But more important than his points was the emotional lift he gave to the rest of the team. Like you, you commented on the Willis Reed aspect. Of, uh, when I talked to Brad McAllister, the assistant coach, he said, no, that wasn't the idea at all, although it certainly played that way. And again, if this game was in Philadelphia, I don't know that they would have done it that way. Or I'm sorry, if it was in Niagara Falls, if they would have ran him out when they did. But they really got everything they could out of the crowd. But Schroeder's the kind of kid that you want to do that for Whitey, these two teams have played some great uh, games in the three years they've been in the MAC together. You see the series is tied at three apiece. Siena won both meetings this season, and I mentioned earlier they did a great job on Randy Woods and Jack Hurd holding them in check, and that will be a key in tonight's game. Yeah, if you ask anyone that follows this league, you'd say these are the two dominating team in this league. Granted that St. Peter's won last season, but these are the two teams that Basically, when it comes down to it, you figure we'll be in the big game. Well, last year it was St. Peter's that defeated LaSalle three times on their way to the MAC championship. And by the way, congratulations to the St. Peter's women's basketball team as the Peahens, in case you missed it in a dramatic game seen earlier tonight on Sports Channel, defeated LaSalle 73-71 to win the MAC women's championship. We've got a good crowd here at the Knickerbock Arena as the explorers of LaSalle 18 and 10 get ready to take on the Saints of Siena. And right now, let's join the PA announcer for the starting lineups in tonight's semifinal showdown. Nine losses, and number three seed. This is the women in the tournament. And starting it forward for Siena, a 6'7 junior from Buffalo, New York, number 33, Lee Matthews. At forward for LaSalle. A 6'6 senior from Lidditz, Pennsylvania, number 25, Jack Hurd. At forward for Siena, a 6'3 senior from Marshall, Michigan, number 12, Bruce Schroeder. And at forward for LaSalle, a 6'8 senior from Bangor, Pennsylvania, number 51, Bron Holland. At center for Siena, a 6'10 freshman from Rochester, New York, number 34, Jason McKinney. And at center 
for LaSalle, a 6'9 senior from Amsterdam, the Netherlands, number 44, Milko Liebers. Now the guards, first for Siena, a 6'2 freshman from Fairport, New York, number 22, Stu Downing. Guard for LaSalle, 6'4", junior from Slidell, Pennsylvania, number 24, Jeff Neubauer. Head guard for Siena, a 5'11", sophomore from Stratford, Connecticut, number 23, Doremus Fetterman. And at guard for LaSalle, he's a six-footer, a senior from Philadelphia, number 14, Randy Woods. Head coach of Siena is my team, head coach for these scores is Speedy Morris. Well, two coaches, emotional coaches, will be going at it tonight in this semifinal game. We'll be back with the start of tonight's game in just a moment. Of all the important safety features we put in the new Camry, some may seem a bit extravagant. Stronger body construction, child protector rear door locks, rear seat headrests, adjustable front seat belt anchors, Standard driver-side airbag, available anti-lock brakes. But when it came to safety, we didn't ask what it costs. We asked what it could save. The all-new 1992 Toyota Camry. We just couldn't leave well enough alone. Oh, 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 okay. The Nets shoot it out with the Warriors live Tuesday at 10.30 on Sports Channel America. Okay. Back at the Knickerbock Arena, the noisy crowd as we're just about ready to go. Milko Levers, number 44 for LaSalle, jumping center against Lee Matthews, number 33 for Siena. And the ball batted around. Levers dives to the floor. He's got bad wheels. And Jeff Neubauer, who's replaced Paul Burke in the lineup, he's out with an appendectomy operation. I think they need some numbers from Neubauer. That's Neubauer number 24. He'll run the point. Randy Woods is the other guard, of course. Ilka Leverse, number 44, the center. Jack Hurd, 25. And Ron Holland, 51, the forwards. This is Holland with a fake on McKinney, and he rolls it in. Straight man-to-man -man defense to start for the Saints. Ron Holland. Coming up with the bucket, and this is Doremus Benerman. He has to come up with a big ball game. He's got to provide points and leadership uh, from the outside, and he has, on occasion, been brilliant this year. On other occasions, plays like a sophomore, makes a lot of mistakes. He does. He's very, very quick, and I don't know if there's a, a LaSalle player quick enough to play him straight up. That ball taken away, and Jack Hurd drops it off to Jeff Neubauer. So far, I think Schroeder has better mobility than he did last night. LaSalle has been held to 65 and 64 points in their two losses to Siena this year. Jack Hurd missing. McKinney battling hard. Randy Woods throws it off of McKinney, and it'll be LaSalle ball. We've got excellent officials working tonight's game. Jody Silvestri, Tom Lopes, and John Lutcher. Woods a launching one. And picking up where he left off yesterday with 42 points on this floor. Randy Woods is really fun to watch. You see him make a shot like that. There's no chance that goes in, right? It's nothing but net. Randy Woods, who had held to a season-low nine points earlier this year against Siena. And Randy Woods is the kind of player that if the crowd gets against them, he'll really come out and kill it. Downing pulling up. It'll be his responsibility to guard Randy Woods. And he did a brilliant job in both games. The other game, Randy Woods had 19. So held to 19 and 9. Well, Doremus is starting on him right now. Doremus yeah. better is playing. Downing's playing Hurd, which is a difficult matchup. In the corner, Woods again. Hurd with the rebound. Tapped away. And Bennerman comes up with it. He comes down court with Schroeder. Instead goes to Downing. And he'll bank it in. Stuart Downing, the freshman from upstate New York here in Fairport, averaging about six a game. Stewart Downing probably has to take it a little bit maybe to the next level. He really has to help make up for Schroeder's loss. Well, Schroeder in the ballgame, of course, right now. Levers missing. And a foul on the rebound. And the ball 
against LaSalle. Go against Randy Woods. And one thing we haven't talked about much, you know, Woods is such a vital cog in this offense for the Explorers. He certainly can't afford to get in foul trouble. Well, Downing had an excellent ball game last night, Whitey. 12 points. He shot three for four with six for eight from the line. And they're going to need, again, another big game from him, both ends of the court offensively and defensively. Matt Gross on the floor for Jason McKinney. Mike Dean really plays uh, center by committee. He doesn't really just leave one guy out there. He plays a bunch of people. Earlier this year, Leverst had a big ball game. 19 points against Siena. And a three-point loss down in Philadelphia. Miss Downing outside. Benneman. Schroeder. Schroeder guarded by Neubauer. Now picked up on a double team. And Neubauer on the tie-up. The ball will stay in the hands. Of Siena. Bruce Schroeder, who's so strong, you will wonder how much mobility is limited by that very severely sprained ankle. I think yesterday they talked about about 50%. You can't expect him to take many people to the basket. You think a stop like that, like he just made, mostly on his left ankle, is going to hurt him a little bit. And Mike Dean, as he talked to our Dave Sims early this afternoon, said he's going to kind of run him in and out, play him a few minutes at a time. He's out right now. Joe Middleton has replaced him and Downing missing. Neubauer with the rebound. LaSalle leading by three. Neubauer to Leverst along the baseline. And Matt Grass wrestles the rebound down. The freshman at 6'9", 235. Benjamin for three. Oh, Leverst going up so strong for that rebound. The milkman from Holland. So that's not a shot that, that Doremus Benjamin normally would take, but in the flow, Mike Dean doesn't mind. Neubauer missing, and Downing will push it up. They've got a four on one here. Travel, yes, travel, but what's the call going to be? The call is going to be a foul. I think they missed a the travel on Matt Grass. Whitey Rigsby, who loves to officiate. No, don't tell right Jody Sylvester so that. <laughs> I think you see had the we, right call. See if we got to look at the replay. There he goes. One. One. Got to be a travel. Has to be a travel. Foul is on Neubauer. It'll be his first. Lee Matthews comes out, along with Joey Middleton. Very quick substitution. Schroeder back in. And a guy who played very strong off the bench yesterday, Andy Grizzoulis, another physical player. He fouled out in the game yesterday, but he's the guy who gets the loose balls. He gets the ball up on the backboard. And he really plays hard all the time. Mike Dean has a couple of guys like that that he can really count on that have big, big hearts when they play. Speaking of guys who played well, Matt Grass last night off the bench, 10 points, Whitey. Normally not a scorer. He has a high this year of 12, and he'll get another free throw here. Crowd seems to like him, too. About 69% from the line for this freshman from Trumbull, Connecticut. And he the, plays the point on their press, too, sometimes. Now they're going to move him back. Depending on what type of press, this is 2-2-1. They put Grass in the back as the goalie. Hurd, guarded by Downing. Interesting change with, as you said, Whitey, Downing, the best defensive player they have on Jack Hurd. Woods with the dish off, batted around. Oh, what an opportunist. <laughs> Talk about having a nose for the ball. Downing looking inside, instead goes to Benjamin. They swing it in the corner to Schroeder. And this is the three, and Ron Holland uses that bulky body to pull the rebound down. I think what you might see with Schroeder. Here's Woods, in and out. And Schroeder trying to get position, knocked it out. I was about to say, I think what you might see with Schroeder is he might shoot the ball a little bit short because he doesn't have the same leverage on his shot, the same jumping ability. Time out on the floor, and the Explorers early in the first half lead by four. Albany, the capital of New York State, in the capital Saratoga region, discover its many advantages. From historical architecture to today's futuristic Empire State Plaza, join us for our many family events and festivals along the scenic Hudson River. Professional sports abound and are one of the many year-round attractions. Or spend an evening enjoying the performing arts, from Broadway-quality shows to symphony orchestras. Be our guest. For information, call 1-800-622-8464. genuine draft. For those who've discovered its real draft taste, the world is a very cool place. Are you still pushing that spreader? 
back and forth, hoping for a thick green lawn? Relax and let Lawn Doctor deliver environment-supporting care and the rich, thick, healthy lawn you want. Now you have a choice of Lawn Doctor's time-tested, proven lawn care or their new 100% all-natural fertilization program. Lawn Doctor. Nobody does it better. Naturally. Here we see about two possessions ago where Randy Woods gets the ball in an opportunistic basket. I don't know who he was passing the ball to. Talk about spreading a needle, but look who gets it for an easy leg. Well, Bruce Schroeder in the ball game right now, Whitey, and he was a key man in their victory up here as Leavehurst will miss the shot. And having an awful time, Leavehurst blocked by Grass, and he'll go to the line to shoot a couple of free throws. But right now, LaSalle generally a good shooting team from the field. They're three for 11, and they have to shoot the ball well because that's what they do best is shoot, like you say. Lever's been in a position to make a lot of shots, and he hasn't done it yet. Very rarely do you see such good inside passing. Look at that. Bron Holland, no look pass to Lever's, doesn't finish, gets two free throws. Jason McKinney back in the ball game in the center by committee position. There's a look at McKinney, the junior from Grand Rapids, Michigan, part of the Michigan connection as Levers will get another one. Center by committee. How about coach by committee? If we get a chance <laughs> to get a look at Mike Dean's bench, he admits he doesn't know anything. That's why he has all those suits on his bench. <laughs> Whitey, he's not going to invite them all. the next party. <laughs> Benjamin Downing will work the backcourt. McKinney, Schroeder, and they're up front. And losing the ball that time was McKinney. Gets it back, and the basket is good inside. A strong basket for Andy Grizzolas. Talk about opportunistic. Andy Grizzolas. He plays with his heart, as we say. He plays real hard all the time. You see the loose ball on the floor here. Ron Holland makes a good play as the ball's going out of bounds. Just tries to deflect it back in. His teammate picked it up. Newbauer did not pick the ball if he started looking down the floor. Brazil's easy basket. And he does a good job off the bench, averaging about six and a half a game. He's a real program guy, coach's delight. Mike Dean raves about him when you ask him about it. Yeah, I would have to not like a kid like that. 6'6", six, six, out of Westland, Michigan, senior. And LaSalle leading right now by three, nine to six, early in the first half. Just man-to-man -man pressure. The defender was a lot quicker than Newbow. Newbow rarely turns it over, however, has an excellent ratio. Jack Hurd missing. He has struggled in his shooting against this team in the two previous games. Randy Woods with the rebound, got one of the foul. And Hurd again misses, but Levers comes up with a rebound. Well, Jack Hurd, if he misses two in a row, he just figures he'll make the next two. There he goes for number three. Boom! And he finally connects. One for three from the three-point line is like shooting 45% from the floor. That's not bad. Hurd had four games in the two previous games against Seattle. One game he shot five for 14, and in the other game, seven for 18, Marty. That's not his percentage. Schroeder in the corner, guarded by Leverst. Here's Benjamin, gets a pick from Grizzula. Down and cut off. Schroeder. Benjamin picked up by Hurd, shot clock down to 12. Benjamin blocked that time by Hurd. And quickly up court, Ron Holland got the rebound up to Neubauer. Randy Woods has had a quiet start, spun out. Good position on the rebound. Downing got that rebound. Inside, Grisoulis off the nice pass from Downing. Terrific entry pass that time by Stuart Downing. On transit, or I should say in transition. Five points for Grisoulis. And you wonder, where is Lee Matthews? He's going to come in. Randy Woods turns it over. So this is not typical of LaSalle and the crowd becoming a factor early here in this game. Difficult pass to catch, but Randy should have caught it with two hands. He tried to catch with Corral it really with one hand. Has to go up with both hands to catch the ball. And you see the entry pass to Krizulis, and again, even that Niagara coach, Jack Armstrong, could have put that one in. <laughs> and Jack will be joining us shortly to get some of his comments here on this first half. Inside Lee Matthews back in the game. Oh, the bucket. And Sienna has crawled right back in this one. He Down gives them, by two. Barry, he gives them some inside power play, and he didn't do much yesterday. 
Randy Woods, great look. And Lee Hurst finished the play. No foul. Lee Hurst with four. One-handed, left-handed, no look pass. Terrific pass by number 14. Schroeder guarded by Hurd. Excellent matchup of the Mac Academic All-American 20. What great players on and off the court Hurd and Schroeder are. Middleton. We'll get Jennifer Cole out here. We have the whole crowd. <laughs> Two of the top five in the nation of the Academic All-American team on the floor right now. Bruce Schroeder. And, of course, Jack Hurd. Schroeder along the baseline. Just can't make the move with that ankle. Middleton open. Hurd quickly up court to Randy Woods. Middleton trying to draw the charge. Randy Woods having a tough time as Randy misses another shot. Oh, look at Randy Woods with those quick hands. Look at the move here. That was just strength against quickness right there, and he's just too strong that close in for Doremus Benjamin to play. Doremus has to try to shut him down out further. He's Seven Fiddler coming to the ball game, probably for Benjamin. Seven points for Randy Woods. Inside Matthews almost ran into his own teammate. Short and Hurd with the ball. LaSalle leading by six. Newbauer pulling up. Levers killing him inside. And it's now an eight-point lead. Might have got away with a little two-step there. Seven for Levers. Benjamin stopped by her. Great defense by LaSalle right now. And the ball goes over to the fired-up Explorers. We've got time out on the floor. We pause for a local break with the Explorers leading the Saints by eight. So I dropped by my buddy Jack's house the other day. I find him with a strange expression on his face, which can only mean one thing. He's thinking. I'm tired of having to read everything to keep up with sports, he says. I'm no Evelyn Wood, you know. This is from a man who thinks C-Spot Run is a tongue twister. Hey, I said, there's one place you can get it all. The Sporting News. It's the only magazine that gives you baseball, football, hoops, and hockey 52 weeks a year. It's got stats like you've never seen. And reports on every team, even off-season. To top it all off, the Sporting News has awesome special issues, and they don't cost you a penny more. Sounds like the Sporting News is all I need. So what's it going to cost me? Look, just call this toll-free number. You get a whole bunch of issues for just a few bucks. You can spread out payments, even charge it. Gee, Jack says, I can get it all in the Sporting News and get the best deal around? Ah, for a brief thrilling moment, the wind whistling between Jack's ears was still. <laughs> the Sporting News, more than just the score. Thinking about the mighty two Mets? Click Sports Channel. During the off-season, the Hot Stove Report gave you an exclusive first peek at the new New York Mets. I'm used to winning. I've done so the last two years, and, and I didn't come here to lose. As winter fades, Sports Channel heads south for live spring training coverage with call-in shows featuring Mets players and coaches. See it live this Friday at 10.30. And when opening day swings around... We saw after the last steal by Randy Woods, him get Doremus Benjamin. Randy was probably drooling over this opportunity right here. Great move, takes the ball in the basket. Now watch after the play. Randy, you might say, gets a taste of his own medicine. Watch as he goes down court, Krizulis, boom. No problem getting in his way, and I think they want to try to wear Randy Woods down a little bit, which is a little bit difficult. Randy with seven points, but he's shooting a little bit off tonight. Newbauer, over to Hurd. Boy, in and out again for Jack Hurd. But again, they come up with the offensive rebound. Hurd missing. Oh, they try to jam it. Wooten missing the jam. Let's Wooten in the ballgame, number 31. And the freshman buries the shot. Bindlingmeyer. Brian Bindlingmeyer off the bench with the bucket. Well, that takes nerves to steal. You come off the bench like that and nail your first three. Well, they got big performances from his freshman last night, Randy Wood. And again, a rebound. Ray Schultz tying up. Bindlingmeyer, and a foul will be called. Bindlingmeyer says, hey, I've got the ball rep. I've got the ball, Jody Sylvester. Well, Jody Sylvester went right over. He doesn't want to start any kind of nonsense in this game. It's too important a game. You want your players to stay on the floor. Randy Woods, never a shy, shy person to shoot the ball. It looked like all ball was beginning, but then he went around his back. Saints down by five, grass, travel, travels, and Jody Phillips and Silvestri has the call in front of us. It's amazing to think Jody Silvestri has another job. <laughs> he does every single game. He's like us, Whitey. He's all over. 
Zach Hurd to Jeff Neubau. Open Randy Woods. Again, having problems, but look at the offensive rebounds. They're killing Sienna with these uh, rebounds. Again, Jack Hurd. They'll just keep firing until they make them. Jack Hurd makes it three. That's the problem. You shut Randy Woods down, it's still Jack Hurd. Very upset. Mike Dean with his offensive uh, work on the backboard there. Lack of rebounding. We'll be back right now. LaSalle by eight. Hey. I know how you feel. Your weight is up, your energy's down, your self-esteem's low, your blood pressure's high. You know what you need? Exercise. But who has the time? You do. Just imagine. Imagine what a difference you can make in just 20 minutes a day, three times a week with Nordic Track. Nordic Track. They call it the world's best aerobic exercise. Nordic Track's patented flywheel provides smooth, non-jarring continuity of motion, so there's no stress to your back or knees. Your total body gets into the action. That's not true with ordinary exercisers. Nordic Track's total body workout burns more calories. You'll lose weight, reduce stress, and feel better. I'll bet you never imagined fitness at home could be this easy. Now is the time to get rid of that unfit body. Create a new you. Try Nordic Track for 30 days at home with no risk or obligation. You'll see and feel the difference. Call for a free video and brochure. Alka-Seltzer Plus goes to the Arctic Circle, where the toughest colds live. The cold is miserable in this environment. Uh, Alka-Seltzer Plus takes care of the aches, the runny nose. It does the job. Alka-Seltzer Plus fights tough winter colds with a combination of ingredients you can't get anywhere else. Alka-Seltzer Plus has done exactly what I've needed it to do. If I don't go to work, kids go hungry. Alka-Seltzer Plus, tough medicine for tough winter colds. And for your tough sinus symptoms, try Alka-Seltzer Plus sinus allergy medicine. Barry Landers along with Whitey Rigsby here at the Knickerbock Arena. And we're joined by Jack Armstrong, the fine coach of Niagara, who lost last night to this fired-up Siena Club. Jack, your observations on this first half. I think the biggest thing right now is the offensive rebounding that LaSalle's had. And a big reason because of that is the fact that they take a lot of three-point shots, so therefore there's a lot of long rebounds. Well, they're not shooting well from the field. Hurt is two for seven, Randy Woods three for nine. Nevertheless, why do they have an eight-point lead? And normally there wouldn't be this many offensive rebounds, rebounds, but Randy Woods is missing a lot. Bindlingmeyer. Back out to Benneman. He's got to hit that shot. And Bindlingmeyer comes up with a loose ball. He hits it home off the glass. How about, I didn't hear him call glass. you got to call that in the park. They <laughs> sure do. <laughs> Five points for the freshman. The play was made by Grizzoula, slapping the ball back out there. Brian Bindlingmeyer from Barberton, Ohio, averaging six points a ball game. Ray Schultz at the top of the key. Schultz getting some unusual minutes. I think Leverse is hurting a little bit. Randy Woods will hit the shot from the top of the key. Randy now four for ten from the field, ten points as he hits his first three-pointer. And he's having a bad first half. Henley Meyer. Schroeder open in the corner. Pulls up. Oh, he looked pretty good shooting that ball. Well, he's a streak shooter. Jack, you've seen when he's on, he can burn you, Bruce Schroeder. No question. Sienna's got to stay away from trying to match them three for three, though, because LaSalle's a lot more capable from that area. Unlike last year when they had Mark Brown, the Sienna, not a great outside shooting ball club this year. Neubauer launches a three. So Jeff Neubauer out of Slidell, Louisiana, with his first bucket. And another timeout. Mike Dean unhappy with the defense. No question. Yeah. All right, we'll be back. 8.57 to go in the first half. LaSalle has opened up a 10-point lead. Why does Marine Midland work so well for so many? You can talk to us. You can talk a car loan with Lee Doyle. From behind his desk, he's put hundreds behind the wheel. Family growing, meet Alan Clark. Last year, he helped 30 people build home additions for their new additions. It's not just billions in assets or hundreds of branches that make us what we are. Marine people do it so well because they do it so much. So let's work it out together. Ask Don Flynn. He's talking from experience. Admiral and Lady Billingsley of Devonshire. Lord and Lady Atherton of Sussex. 
Sir Alfred and Lady Sheffield of Dunsmore and Bob of Buffalo. New York Lotto. Hey, you never know. The Corvette uses premium fuel for hot performance. The human body needs premium nutritional fuel for top performance. Whatever your sport, General Nutrition has hot sports nutrition products for you. With heavyweight gainer 900, just one serving delivers over 900 low-fat calories to help you pack on the pounds. Champions heavyweight gainer 900. Accelerate to top performance. GNC, the authority in sports nutrition products. Jack, you have to look at Schroeder shooting the ball right here. He looks pretty confident shooting the ball. And also, more important than anything, he looks pretty healthy as you see him make the shot, run back. What kind of lift do you think he gave them yesterday emotionally? Oh, no question. A major lift. Kind of like a Willis Reed coming out to play for the Knicks in the, against the Lakers. Uh, he's just really playing well right now, and he's, he's playing with some confidence, too. All right. Let's see if he can lift his team again. They're down by 10. Top block for Schroeder. It's amazing he didn't attempt to shot that long if he's jumping off a bad ankle, because that was almost at the NBA three-pointer. And Jack Armstrong just showed his New York there, by the way. <laughs> Talking about Willis. <laughs> Jack Armstrong, native New Yorker, went to Fordham. Got his start in coaching under Tom Penders at Fordham. And what a turnaround. See, some, sometimes overshadow is hurt because Woods can be such a dominant presence on the court. But Hurt is a terrific, terrific streak three-point shooter. No question about it. He has nine points. He's three for eight from the field. Ryan Bindlingmeyer will sit down. And Joey Middleton comes back in. And Lee Matthews has been non-existent in this game for a guy who was such a key player he sits down imagine taking 16 three-pointers already and you're 12 minutes into the game middleton who's a good outside shooter they need perimeter shooting here they're not getting second chances they've been getting killed on the boards here middleton for three and a foul called outside and that's the second person on Randy Woods, and we have to watch that because Randy Woods is the key guy to stay on the floor. You know, a, key, a key thing right now for uh, a key thing for LaSalle Joy right Middleton. now is the fact that they've had the line, Nico Lieberst and, and Bron Holland on the bench during this run here. Why do you think he has them sitting down that long? Uh, I think they look a little bit tired right now, and I, I, I think that they feel the fact that they're sitting back in the zone. They don't need as much uh, from the defensive end inside. They just. They're just really focusing right now on taking a lot of three-point shots. Now, Speedy was telling me the other night that he feels that he's not sure Milko can play three games in a row because he has a bad knee that needs this knee surgery. Yeah, and then right now they can get him a rest while they're up. Middleton, normally a good free-throw shooter. He was five for five at the line last night. We'll get another one here. As he tries to make it two out of three. Jack, when you play against a team like the South, and you know they're just going to plow away and keep on shooting those three-pointers, how do you prepare your team to defend against that? Because we're so used to preparing to defend internally and on the glass. Now you have to really spread out your defense. It becomes very difficult. And again, just like Sienna's having trouble with, it really becomes difficult on the rebounding side of the uh, off offense, defense, because the shots are coming off so long, they're not coming off in the areas you normally used to rebound. It. And it has to be frustrating for a defender to think he did a great job and really push a player like Woods or Hurt out, and all of a sudden they shoot a three from you know, 28 feet out. No question, and he can make them. All right, substitutions have been made right now. Downing back in the ball game, along with Middlingmeyer. Here's Randy Woods launching one. And the rebound to Downing. Down by 10. Two men get caught back up court. They had the numbers five on three, but it quickly evaporated. Matt Grass will take the jumper. Matt Grass is a terrific shooter. He showed that last night in this building, and the crowd really seems to respond to his play. Three points for Grass, so suddenly they're back with an eight. They trail by 13 a couple of minutes ago. Almost a five-second call. Jody Sylvester was close to five, and Bindlinger stuck his hand in. Bindlingmeyer called for the block. It's his first and the second on the team, as we'll get a substitution. Leverse back in for Ray Schultz. You know, Jack, you made a good point for those, both of those guys on the bench. Now, Leverse has had a nice rest. Yeah, no question. And they did a great job. Leverse then Holland early in the game, pounding the offensive boards. And Leverse involved in a lot of the offense. He scored. Heard, who did not play well yesterday. He was 4 for 11. Wants the ball. Instead, it splits Wooten. And the freshman missing. Grass with a rebound. Boy, he looks mean right now. Randy Woods and Grass look like they were trying to get into it. Randy has to be careful. Bindlingmeyer. Grass fighting for the rebound, but it comes down to Wooten. All alone, Vasquez.
basket hanging lever. Again, the play, the court awareness by Randy Woods. One hand, length of the court pass, lever finished the play. Eight points for Leverse. He's playing well. Again, he played well in the first half yesterday. Rizoulis turning inside over Wooten for the bench, giving him a big lift here. Andy Grizzoulis coming off the bench, Bindling Meyer. He did last night. Grizzoulis really played well yesterday. And along with Matt Grass. Wooten guarded by Grizzoulis. Look at the face of Grizzoulis. You can read the emotion. Hurd trying to get the ball in low on Stewart down, and he has about five inches on it. Leave Hurst. Hurd will take it. Oh. oh. I mean, they couldn't have defended that screen much better. They had really two people running out at Hurd. 12 points for Jack Hurd. I think to shoot that far out, you have to be really focused on the rim and focused on what you're doing. No question. And you've and you got to have confidence. And you got to have the coach has to have confidence in you to do that. And, they, and Speedy does in his kids. Jack, you wouldn't mind having a couple of the guards out here that we're watching tonight, would you? Oh, no question. But could, could you sit on the bench and watch your guys shoot the way they shoot? If I had guys that could do that. <laughs> I don't know. That might drive me to drink. That might just put me over the top. Downing pulling up. And another freshman contributes. Stewart Downing with the basket. And the lead is now back to nine. Four points for Downing. But where is Betterman? Betterman has two points in the ball game, Whitey. And he's spending a lot of time trying to defend Woods, and he's doing a good job on Woods. Betterman just got hurt, too. Coming around a screen, he really got hurt. And it's getting pretty physical. Grass that time threw Levers to the ground, and Levers will get, he'll get him again. Betterman count the basket, and he was fouled. He got beaten by Woods a moment ago, and he says, I'm going to come back. I'm a sophomore against the senior and show you what I can do. And he got beaten by an awful nasty screen. That's the third personal on Randy Woods. You don't see Randy Woods in foul trouble very often, gentlemen. Now, Jack is a coach. Three personal fouls to take him out of the game. I think with a, tw I think with a 10 point lead right now, you might want it for a few minutes. Uh, but the problem right now is Speedy doesn't have Paul Burke to go to. So I think he's kind of left in a bind, and they're going to probably have to sit in his zone, continue to sit in the zone like they are. Yeah, they're leaving, as for now, they're leaving Randy on the floor. Yeah, he just, he's got to really stay away from contact right now. And the fact that they're in his zone helps a little bit. Interesting. The first game, foul trouble was a factor, too, in the women's game. Well, it's missing, downing the rebound. Saints down by nine. Bindlingmeyer for three. Matthews the rebound over Lee Hurst. You know, Mike Dean early in this half called to burn a couple of timeouts. In a TV game, he only gets three. So he's already burnt two of them. And maybe those timeouts are getting this crowd back in the ballgame. You can hear the crowd. They're up on their feet all over Nickelback Arena. Heard. Foul before the shot. Bindlingmeyer will be called for the foul. It'll be his second and only the third on the team. One thing, Jack, with, with Bron Holland and Levers both on the floor at the same time, they really can set monster screens for Randy Woods. No question. Randy Woods gets great screens every time. And finally, they're taking Randy Woods right out there. I think a good move by Speedy Mars. So you got him thinking he's going to sit in the rest of the half now. I would think so. Offensive rebound for Sienna this time. They're saying that, that foul was on the floor. I think it was on the floor, too. So just a common foul. The inbounds to the south. Put 45. Latiki Colombo in the ballgame, and Randy Woods, you see on the bench right now, sitting down. That is Colombo, the freshman, who has not played a whole lot lately, averaging four points. Again, the crowd trying to stir up the defense here. Newbau inside, good pass. Right. Holland missing, the right. follow is good. Good pass by Newbau. Puts a lot more pressure, Jack, on Newbauer to make some things happen without Woods on the floor. And I think a good strategy by LaSalle going right inside, going right down the gut. And that's what they're going to have to do with Woods sitting on the bench. No question. And Ron Holland's capable of scoring some points in there for them. Bruce Schroeder. Over to Stewart down. Bench scoring 18 to zip. Foul's going to be on Blitz Wooten. Lee, May May uh, Lee Matthews, I was about to say Lee Mayberry. Lee, <laughs> Lee Matthews very upset because his teammates aren't getting the ball. He feels he's open in the low box. Well, here you have Doremus Betterman and Lee Matthews, two keys to this club between them. They're good for 32 points a game, but they have about six or eight in this yeah. game right now. They need to both score, but I think also Betterman brings so much with his playmaking abilities and Matthews with his rebounding. Neither one of them are one-dimensional. 
no question. I think right now, Betterman's really so focused on Garden Woods right now that a lot of his offense has been taken away. And he's done a good job on Woods. Very good. I have to say that, and Woods is sitting down now, so I think Dreamers did a, a terrific job. Maybe he can get his offense going in the last 345. Matthews sitting down. Oh, Matthews uh, missing that free throw. He has four. Betterman has only three. Heard misfiring on that. Colombo kept it alive. New bound. Over to Colombo. He'll shoot the three. Look at the battle on the boards, and finally Lee Matthews comes up with it. Matthews normally one of the better rebounds in the league, about 11 rebounds just behind Drew Henderson. Offensive foul will be called as Neubauer went down in the lane. If Jason McKinney just plowed into Neubauer. And the freshman motioning to his coach. Coach, maybe it wasn't me. <laughs> Jack, what do you do? You, you you had a fine season this year, and I know you're a little disappointed losing yesterday, but looking ahead to next year, you got a lot of people back. Yeah, well, you know, Sean Chiano is our only senior on the team, so we feel that we have a good future coming back, so we're hopeful, we're hopeful for that. See, Jack, if your budget was as big as Mike Dean's, you could have all these coaches. One, two, a seat missing three, four, five, six, seven. That guy's the doctor. Eight. Now, there's 10 people in suits on the bench, and the, the, the administration people who were upset they had to set out extra chairs for the home team. <laughs> Benjamin back inside, Matthews asserting himself, and Wooten committed the foul. Just before that, you saw them get the ball inside to Brad Holland. Sienna's had trouble this year against power teams. You gave them some trouble earlier this year in the two games you played. They don't defend well in the box. Well, they don't. At the same time, I think the thing they did last night against us was their pressure really hurt us. It would not allow us to get into their power game. I think tonight they're trying to mix things up defensively and press a little bit. And the other thing that the one thing they're getting hurt on right now is really is on the board. Matthews, not a great free throw shooter, around 66%. There, there you see the players, Barry. The players are sitting up in the stand. So what Mike D does, he puts these suits on the bench and then he gets a couple of free uh, complimentary tickets so his players have to, can get in the building. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. Leave it to your friend Mike Dean. Who learned it maybe from Jerry Welsh? Jerry Welsh might have taught him everything. And Judd Heath got another knucklehead in this business. And Jack Armstrong is another in the long line of knuckleheads to stay in this business. Knocked away by Grass. Well, he, covered. he traveled. Pulling up Colombo. And the good-looking freshman from Herndon, Virginia gives his club an 11-point lead again. Grass not shy here. I don't know if that's the shot that uh, Coach Dean wanted the big guy to take. I haven't mentioned Bruce Schroeder's name for a while. Now Schroeder in the game right now, but not taking many shots. He averages 16 a game. Heard missing, grasp the rebound. Quickly to Benjamin. Schroeder forces it. Matthews got knocked down, and we'll finally get... Uh, we're going to get a foul called, I believe, underneath. I don't know. Or is it just going to be an out-of-bounds? That shot down the other end, I don't think, was one that uh, Speedy Mars wanted. They were in that high post delay game right there. And Jack Hurd forced that a little bit. Some Look at the contact the between Wooten and Matthews. Good I won't no say call. nothing. These Good guys no call. <laughs> These guys ref my games. I won't say nothing. Yeah, I'll pick on the refs. I don't coach. <laughs> Some people say I don't broadcast either. Schroeder inside, and there's a foul against the South. First, the comments you're hearing, besides the erudite remarks of my colleague Whitey Rigsby, are from another erudite Fordham grad, Jack Armstrong. Hey, Jack, he does, Niagara. he doesn't realize we're both from New York, and we don't have a clue what erudite means. <laughs> Well, this is a conference of uh, MAC academics. Oh, yeah, no question. No, yeah, but as you'll know, we'll look at Mike Dean and we'll look at Speedy Mars and our, our, our cohort next to us. It has nothing to do with academia as far as the coaches. No, no question. <laughs> Schroeder looking for point number four. He's got it, and he's back to a nine-point lead with under two minutes to go. Dave Sims coming up at halftime. I'd hate to see the combined cubes of the nine coaches in this league. <laughs> that could get pretty ugly. LaSalle's running a delay game again. High post delay game right here. They're just trying to run some time off the clock to save Woods, I Exactly, guess. no question. Good strategy. New bow. Benjamin backing off. But Speedy has to be happy to go to the locker room with any kind of lead. Sure. You know, approaching 10. At the same time, particularly the way this game's gone, LaSalle's dominated, and Sienna's only down nine points, so they got to feel pretty good, too. Colombo off the feet from Hurd, and we're going to get a foul call against Ron Holland on the rebound. It'll be his first. You're right. You can always analyze it if the cup's half full or half empty. You're right. But, uh, Speedy has to be happy going to the locker room up 10. But the way the game has gone, and it really seems dominated by LaSalle, 
my team's right in the ballgame. No question, again, in his home arena, and that's a big key. I guess you pointed out earlier, Jack, the big difference is on the boards, those second and third chances that LaSalle's getting in sooner than all of this man's ball club is going to stick those shots. I, to I talked to Speedy Jack after the game last night. I said, Speedy, you have to keep your coat on. You take your coat off, and it all starts falling over your belt. <laughs> At least the coat covers it up. <laughs> Bruce Schroeder sat down, and Matt Grass looking for his fourth point. You see the big night he had last night against Jack Armstrong's team. Well, Speedy is still in the bar in Philadelphia. Oh, he so is. That's, that's where he gets that belly from. I've been there. He says, did you tell everybody I lost weight? He said, how, I said, how much? He says, two pounds. I said, you'll find it. we got to have a max swim fast contest like the NFL coaches. That's right. Speedy and I will get in on that. <laughs> Jack Hurd backing it out. Newbauer nearly stolen by Benjamin. Inside, Holland wanted to draw the foul, and he did. A little bit of acting, perhaps, but Joey Middleton raises his hand. It'll be his first. As we see, Bill, the South had a pretty easy time of getting the ball inside. Good entry pass that time. And Bron Holland really didn't even know where the basket was. He just tried to draw the foul. I think that's what Mike Dean is most concerned about with his, his first half is his team is allowing LaSalle. Obviously, the, the officials felt he didn't know where he was either because they're not even calling his shooting foul. <laughs> LaSalle getting good interior passing. 54 seconds to go in the half. You see the time remaining. There's about a discrepancy of nine Milton. seconds on the shot clock. Now the Milton clock right here. Probably Sienna on up with the last shot in the half. Good strategy again. Heard. Neubauer. Heard. Good pass inside. Holland blocked by Matthews for the foul. Not a bad play to finally go for. Once it got inside of 45, you knew you were going to give up the last shot anyway, and sure. they had an opportunity for a light. And again, now you, now you now you can set up your defense for the last possession of the half, and, and now you're all set. And again, good power basketball going right inside to the big fellow, Brown Holland. Are you surprised how open these inside people, Holland and Levers, are? It seems like they're really open when they get the ball in the basket. Well, I think Sienna straight, changed their strategy a little bit compared to last night when they played us. They're not pressing as much. So, again, LaSalle's trying to go inside a little bit with them. Uh, and, and when they're not going inside, they're staying way behind the three-point line and taking threes. With LaSalle's numbers being depleted, don't you think pressing them would be a good mode? Would Newbauer really put pressure on them? Possibly. But, again, I think with Randy Woods and Jack Hurt, such great open shooters, you're going to give them wide open shots if you press too much. Holland missed those two free throws and a chance to hold for one here. Down by eight. They trail by as many as 13 on two occasions here in the first half. Benjamin will just hold on to the ball here. See the time remaining. See what they run here. Maybe something for Middleton. Benjamin will take the shot. Knocked out of bounds by Colombo and with four seconds left. It will be Sienna Ball. They'll get Bruce Schroeder back in the ball game along with Brian Bidlingmeyer, the two outside shooters. Yeah, I thought Mike probably would like to have both those guys on the floor, but he couldn't stop the clock for it. And now when he gets the ball out of bounds, he gets that opportunity. That was a good shot opportunity right there by Doremus Benjamin. He created a good shot for himself right off the dribble going left. That was a good shot. And the timing was right. And you want to shoot the ball about six or seven seconds. Now with four seconds to go, LaSalle, even though it went out of bounds off Sienna, could not get a good shot probably at the other end. Downing pulls up too hard, batted around, and the first half comes to an end with the Explorers leading by eight. Jack, I want to thank you, and your thoughts on the first half as Mike Dean heads to the locker. What do you think he's going to tell his club? I think they just got to do a better job in the second half defensively on the boards, and, and offensively, they got to make sure that, that they're able to get the kind of shots they want every time down on offense. I think they're getting into a little bit of a quick of a pace that maybe he wants. What about Speedy Morris? I think he's got to be happy at halftime. I mean, I think they came in this building. They've lost twice. They have an eight-point lead. Randy Woods picked up his third foul with five minutes left, and yet they come out of it with an eight-point lead. They've gone inside real well. They've controlled the boards. Uh, LaSalle's playing a good basketball game right now. Jack, again, our thanks. Congratulations on a fine season, and good luck next year. Thanks a lot. My pleasure, guys. Jack Armstrong, along with Whitey Rigsby and yours truly, Barry Landers, joined by Dave Sims when we return in just a moment. Minolta introduces the world's only true autofocus binoculars. When you hold the AF button down, you hold continuous focus and never miss a second of the action. The world's only true autofocus binoculars.
only from the mind of Minolta. Won't you come on, Bill Bailey? Won't you come on, everybody? No. Great party, huh? No. <laughs> That's limbo. No. Bean dip? No. no. Awesome. Want me to hit the hut? Yeah! Gonna hit the hut tonight! Hit Pizza Hut tonight and pick up the new six cheese pizza for a deliciously low $7.99. A second's just four bucks more. And don't forget to add your favorite toppings. Gonna hit the hut and pick it up tonight! Your party sure is a hit. <laughs> Albany, the capital of New York State, in the capital Saratoga region, discover its many advantages. From historical architecture to today's futuristic Empire State Plaza, Join us for our many family events and festivals along the scenic Hudson River. Professional sports abound and are one of the many year-round attractions. Or spend an evening enjoying the performing arts, from Broadway quality shows to symphony orchestras. Be our guest. For information, call 1-800-622-8464. There are times when you think of family. Long gone. How you're 40 or 45 or older and time has passed by and you've got this empty feeling of how terrible it is. How little you really know about your own family because you never got around to asking. What a loss if you never knew how they got here, who they traveled with or left behind or what they had in their pockets, where they were going. Could they have done it all when they were just six or seven? Family History Center at Ellis Island will be your second chance. Your support will help us computerize records of 17 million immigrants. Help you discover your past. Family History Center can be just a dream or it can be a place to learn more about your past than you ever dreamed of. It's up to you. You can let your past slip away or you can grab this incredible gift. Support the center. Make it happen. Welcome to the Marine Midland Bank Halftime Report. Let's work it out together. Hi again, everybody. Dave Sims here at halftime. Mac Tournament, the game one of our semifinals, and it's LaSalle leading Siena by the score of 44 to 36. Coming up in a few minutes, we'll speak with Manhattan coach Steve Lapis. He's playing in the second game of tonight's doubleheader. Right now, we want to tell you about the Marine Midland Bank scholarship shot that's coming up on the court right behind me in a couple of seconds. And right now, let's go to the PA for the festivities. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set to go. Here is tonight's first shooter representing Manhattan College. Welcome, Thomas Kramer. Wide right. Now, representing Siena College, here's Kevin Kennedy. Kevin knocks it down from the line. Michael Durkin. So we have a winner. He's from Siena College, Kevin Kennedy. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Kennedy from Siena wins the $1,000 scholarship courtesy of Marine Midland guys, Bank. Man. Remember, Marine Midland is an official sponsor of the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. Everyone in the MAC thanks Marine Midland for their support. Uh, with the win here, couldn't get any simpler. Basic foul shot, he gets yeah. the generous bounce. My goodness, Kevin, that's about as easy a thousand dollars as you'll ever win. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. A uh, little, ner little nervous out there? Uh, well, I'm not a little nervous. My parents are going to be real happy. <laughs> Good for you. Big difference shooting in front of a lot of people as yeah. opposed to shooting in the backyard, right? Yeah, I've been shooting in the gym a couple hours a week, so... Good for you. What are you going to do with the Bucks? Uh, it's going to school, and uh, thank you, Marine Midland. All right, very good. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. Thanks All right. Well. Joining us right now, we've got uh, Steve Lapis, the Manhattan coach. Steve, step whoops, step right over here. Sorry about that. Hey, he's new to TV. Don't worry about it. All right. 
You come into tonight's semifinal against Iona, and you suffer a blow last night. You lose one of your big guys. Yeah, it was a little tough blow, you know, to have the kid five minutes to go in the game. He goes up for a rebound. He falls and puts his hand down. He could have a crack there. Right now it looks like a severe sprain, but he couldn't catch a piece of paper if you threw it at him now, so he's not even going to get dressed. Now, Jamal's one of your big guys. He's, he goes what? He goes 6'9", like 235. He's had a great freshman year. He's averaging 7 and, and 5, but he's had a lot of games lately where he's gotten 12 and 8. He's capable of putting up those kind of numbers. He's shooting like 60% in his last 10 games. So we're going to miss him. There's no question. Paul Marshall will miss him. No question about it. All right, so what do you do against an Iona team that it's either all or nothing with that Iona team, as you well know? Well, they're going to be very tough. They're going to be very physical, and that's what we're most concerned about tonight, especially without Jamal out there. We're going to have to go to a couple of kids on the bench who haven't had a chance to play that much. But, hey, that's what players are. they got to be ready to play whenever they're called on. So we're going to be out there working. You're going to miss Jamal. Uh, he's done for a, you know, anything that you would get beyond this game. I mean, he's done for uh, the remainder of the season. I would think that barring some kind of a miracle tomorrow anyway, you know, obviously we're hoping to get in some kind of postseason. But barring a miracle, I would think he's out of this one, this tournament at least. All right, what do you expect from Iona? A very physical team. You know, they have a great player in Derek Canada. You know, we're very concerned about Harry Hart, especially, you know, Jamal has done a good job on him in the past because of his size and strength. Uh, so what they can pose, they pose a lot of problems off the glass for us, and we're very concerned about that. All right, what about Keith Bullock? How has he played against Iona in your previous two meetings? Well, in the first game, he didn't play that well. In the last game, he was great. He had 24 points and 14 rebounds, and the last time we played him, he did a super job. So, uh, you know, he's a first-team All-League player, and he's capable of stepping his game up a notch. All right, Steve, good luck. We'll be watching Thanks game two much. coming up a little bit later. Manhattan against Iona here from the Knickerbock Arena in Albany. We'll take a break, get back for stats and highlights. We're at halftime. LaSalle leading Siena 44-30. 36, back to the Nick Arena right after this. Why does Marine Midland work so well for so many? You can talk to us. Talk savings with Lynn Welch. Her interest has helped hundreds earn more interest. Education, see Linda Gilbert. She's put 1,300 kids through college, including two of her own. It's not just billions in assets or hundreds of branches that make us what we are. Marine people do it so well because... off the cover price. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. The magic of Urban Johnson will always be something special. Treasure it forever. And every week, enjoy all the emotion and drama of sports in Sports Illustrated. Oh, 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 okay. Okay.
the net. Shoot it out with the Warriors. Live Tuesday at 10.30 on Sports Channel America. Okay. Yeah. Back here at Albany, Dave Sims and Whitey Rigsby with you. Let's take a look at the halftime stats are brought to you by Marine Midland Bank as LaSalle leads 44 to 36. Good first half by LaSalle. They get away with Randy Woods with three fouls. It was a good first half, and they had the opportunity to play without Woods for the last five minutes, and that's not generally good for LaSalle Explorers. You bet. And uh, the numbers you read thusly. Look at the shot opportunities by LaSalle. LaSalle has taken 41 shots, and that's an awful lot of shots for a half of basketball. Princeton takes about 40 for the game. But the free throw opportunities for Siena is what's kept them in the game. They're only down eight, and it's because they made up so much at the free throw line. That's amazing. You look at eight for 22 from three-point range. Oh, uh, eight for 22. And the thing is, most of those misses, I think, came from Randy Woods. And Doremus Benneman wasn't too involved offensively, but he did a terrific job defensively on Woods. Good point. Take a look at some of the highlights. And as one uh, person standing behind me said, a real Philadelphia move here. Right there, Randy Woods, terrific offensive play. That's the one time he really got the best of Benneman. If, if they extend the tape, you can see him running into Rizula's right there. You can about to see the contact. All right, here's an upbeat note for Sienna. Yeah, Bidlinger coming off the bench. You'll see him come up with the offensive rebound off the miss from Benderman. Off the bench, Mike Dean got pretty good play from Bidlinger. He made this, and he also made a three. It's a physical, physical first half. Mike Dean seemed to be pretty exasperated with his ball club. One guy who had a good first half was Jack Hurd, making yeah. up a little bit for the misses of Randy Woods. There you see from deep in the corner, just drains the three. We were talking about Mike Dean seemed really exasperated. He called those three timeouts, and he said, look, uh, I'll call another one if I have to. I've got one more. You guys have got to play. Yeah, exactly, and you hate to burn those timeouts. These TV games, you only get three. And he, call, he called two, boom, boom, right yeah. in the first half. So he only has one left, and like you said, you were in the huddle. He said, I'll call the other one. I'll embarrass you in front of 12, 15,000 people here if you want me to. But they started playing a little better. Down eight, he has to be pretty good. And another thing he was talking about, too, is big guys were getting killed inside by the yeah. LaSalle big fellas. Well, they were, and they were getting so many easy opportunities. Bron Holland and Milko Levers both had some easy opportunities right. that they didn't make, but they have to defend better those post people. All right, we're at the half, 44-36, and we'll be back for second half action with Barry Landers right after this. This has been the Marine Midland Halftime Report. Let's work it out together. We're back right after this. Mac Basketball is brought to you in part by Marie Midland Bank. Let's work it out together. By Minolta, creators of the world's only continuous autofocus binoculars. If it's not Minolta, it's not true autofocus. By the New York State Lottery. Hey, you never know. And by Wilson Sporting Goods. When your game demands the best, demand Wilson. Imagine being born with the ability to meet any challenge expertly. That's the wonder of the new Maxim XI from Minolta. With the experience of professionals programmed right in, it responds to any change of speed, or light, or distance automatically for ultimate performance. The new Maxim XI, born experienced. Only from the mind of Minolta. Albany, the capital of New York State, in the capital Saratoga region, discover its many advantages. From historical architecture to today's futuristic Empire State Plaza, join us for our many family events and festivals along the scenic Hudson River. Professional sports abound and are one of the many year-round attractions. Or spend an evening enjoying the performing arts, from Broadway-quality shows to symphony orchestras. Be our guest. For information, call 1-800-622-8464. Nobody Beats the Wiz takes a bite out of the recession. With our spectacular recession-proof coupons, we've reduced prices on thousands of items in every Nobody Beats the Wiz store. Earn huge discounts on TVs, camcorders, cellular phones, rack systems, cameras, music, movies, and the list goes on and on. Just pick up a circular at any Wiz store and save money now with our recession-proof coupons. Nobody Beats the Wiz. Now, in addition to NBC Olympic coverage, you can choose between the best events on three cable channels. The Olympics Triple Cast. Catch the fire behind the flame. Barry Landers along with Whitey Rigsby back at courtside. And as you take a look at the individual scoring for the first half, Randy Woods had 13 points, but shot only 5 for 13 from the field. 3 for 10 from three-point range. Jack Hurd, 4 for 11. He had 12 points. And for Siena... They got 21 points off the bench, Whitey. Led by Andy Grizoulis with seven, and Brian Bidlingmeyer with five, but 
not showing up. Doremus Benneman, one for five from the field. They need points from him. And Lee Matthews had only six points and only two rebounds for the guy who is second in the league in rebounding uh, behind the, the number one guy, Drew Henderson. Henderson. They need to get more out of, out of Benneman offensively, but the thing is, he's, I think he spent so much energy playing Woods, and he did a pretty good job on it, but five for 13, considering the type of shots that Woods takes, really isn't that bad. You know, we talked about it before, three of 10 is, a, is an output from three-point line of nine points. That's like shooting 45% from the, from the two-point area, so it's not that bad. All right, new bower to Randy Woods. And you can book it now that Randy Woods is gonna come out, both guns are blazing. Not a very good shot there. He forced to grasp the rebound. Falls down, going for Leaver strip. Matthews has it up court. Schroeder. Oh, if he had had the good oh. ankle. No, he goes to the basket. No bad basket. basket, however. And you talked about it. He certainly, with a good ankle, would have taken the three right away. Took the ball to the basket a little bit tentative, and I think by making the move a little bit slowly, it gave the defender a chance to get into position. He's not real quick with this move. He looks at his feet, but look, it's almost like a ba -ba -ba -ba, and he comes down very gingerly, tries to come down on his right ankle. I don't know if he did or not. Randy Woods guarded by Benjamin. And Jack Hurd being defended by Downing now. Hurd missing. Lee Hurst, who had a ton of rebounds in the first half, gets another rebound there. Lee Hurst had well, he list only three rebounds there, but he and Holland dominated the boards. Nice looking jumper that time. They did. They were both very involved on the glass. I would have thought he had more than three-two. Barry, don't feel bad. <laughs> Holland, they only credited with five rebounds. Schroeder. I think Schroeder will shoot the next time. He's not going to pass it off again. Matthews, a little tentative against Holland. Downing way off, Grass gets the rebound. He'll go back up, off the mark. Cal's gonna be on Lee Matthews. Jody Sylvester making the call underneath. And for Lee Matthews, that will be foul number two. And Matthews gonna sit down. Mike Dean not very happy with the Lee Matthews play either night, last night or tonight. Sometimes you wonder if Mike's happy about anything in life. Lee Matthews was one for six last night. In 20 minutes, had five points fouled out of the ball game. And again, they worked that ball inside, and it's Bron Holland putting it in. You know, I kid a lot about Mike Dean. I don't want people to get the wrong idea. I think Mike Dean's a terrific, terrific coach. And I think he gets the most out of his players. I can't say enough about him. He's just such a fun person to be around. Schroeder, and he'll kill me for saying that too. He'd rather have me say bad things about him. <laughs> Well, we've spent some evenings with uh, Mike Dean, one of his favorite watering holes, for a cup of tea. Lee Hurst picks up the foul. It's his first and the fourth team foul already, Whitey. And we've played a minute and 46 seconds. And you see the strength that time of, of Bruce Schroeder. By far the strongest guy on this same team. Well, you look at the discrepancy in free throw shooting. Sienna out 11 out of 14 in the first half. And LaSalle only two for four. You know, LaSalle tends to play a perimeter game, although in the first half they did get a lot of shots inside. And they're getting him again here. The lead is 10. The biggest lead for LaSalle has been 13. Sienna, remember, held LaSalle to 65 and 68 points the last time these two clubs played. Heard with the turnaround. See, Heard feels he has a great matchup with Downing playing because he has about six inches on it. He hasn't been able to make anything of it yet. Trying to cut it under 10. Grass, double team, not afraid to put it up. Holland quickly up court to Randy Woods. Cut off by Schroeder, so he'll back it out. Gets the pick from Holland. Oh my. Ron Holland and Levers are both like Jeff Rule in the way they set screens. Off the dish, off in the lane, Grass. I'll tell you, Grass is right in with Holland and these other guys. He didn't play that physical yeah, game. There's a couple of wide bodies out there. This looks like that truck and tractor pull. <laughs> that out of trouble, Connecticut. If Benjamin gets up in the air, he gets the ball, and Grass is thinking about scoring the whole time. Grass, offensive-minded player. Trying to draw contact with Levers, missing. Grizzulis out of bounds. It'll still be... In the hands of the Saints. I think Grass tried a little bit too hard to be offensive minded. No, I thought he's going out. It'll be Schroeder. Well, he is going out. No, Schroeder's yeah, walking is... towards the sideline to get in position. Yeah. It's Grass going out. 
So it's Matthews, Schroeder, Downing, Grazulis, and Bennerman. There will still be Sienna Ball. Saints trailing by 13 here. You can see Schroeder hobbling yeah, that's a little bit. He doesn't look quite as strong as he did in the first half. What a gutty kid. Downing pulling up for the jumper. Oh, got the roll. Brent Stewart Downing is another one who's playing pretty well. Looked like that shot we took in half time for the, <laughs> the scholarship. Well, they're under down to 11 right now. Andy Woods against Karimis Bennerman. Newbauer. Hurd posting up Downing. Spun in and out. I think Hurd should forget about the size and get back to his normal game. He's trying to post up Downing too much. He's not truly a post-up player. Bannerman missing the three and Hurd the rebound. Numbers are bad. Jack Hurd cold here in the second half and now shooting six for 15. Woods four for 14. Remember, the other games, neither one of them shot well. And despite that poor shooting, 10 for 29 of their big stars, they still have an 11-point lead. And you miss Speedy Morris is falling down on the sideline. Now it's down to nine as Downing has eight points. His high 14 against St. Peter's, and gets the crowd again up in the game. Yeah, when you're playing on the road, the one thing you want to try to do is keep the crowd out of it. And 11-point lead with the flow and the momentum going your way, generally that'll happen. Neuerbauer with a bad shot. Heard, and Matthews go for it. Back out to Neubauer. Good look away pass. And Leverse got Matthews picked up. Good play by Jeff Neubauer. The Explorers needed a basket. Ten points for Leverse. He and Hollander in double figures. Schroeder doesn't feel confident taking that jump shot with the ankle. Downing has had a hot hand. Misses the glass. This is a guy who has to play big in the second half. Lee Matthews gets fouled. The foul's going to be on Jack Hurd. I thought it might have been on Woods running past. Now, Lee Matthews is the junior. He's experienced. He averages 14 points and almost 11 rebounds. He's got to come to play here. He needs to get involved in the game. Time out on the floor. 15-28 to go. And the Explorers have an 11-point lead. Why does Marine Midland work so well for so many? You can talk to us. You can talk a car loan with Lee Doyle. From behind his desk, he's put hundreds behind the wheel. Family growing, meet Alan Clark. Last year, he helped 30 people build home additions for their new additions. It's not just billions in assets or hundreds of branches that make us what we are. Marine people do it so well because they do it so much. So let's work it out together. Ask Don Flynn. He's talking from experience. Admiral and Lady Billingsley of Devonshire. Lord and Lady Atherton of Sussex. Sir Alfred and Lady Sheffield of Dunsmore. And Bob of Buffalo. New York Lotto. Hey, you never know. Miller Genuine Draft. For those who've discovered its real draft taste, the world is a very cool place. Try to stir up the crowd here at the Knickerbock Arena. Sienna plays about a four or five of their home games here. They're awfully tough to play in that place in Loudonville. Yeah, Mike Dean had his brothers. He played all the games out there on campus. That's a, a, a true pit in every sense of the word. Joey Middleton now back in the ball game. He can give you a spark off the bench as an outside shooter. I think he's played well in this tournament. Actually playing with three guards now. Grisulis surprising with a shot from the corner. Andy Grisulis with nine points off the bench. I think he's been perfect from the field, Andy Grisulis, Whitey. And again, the bench giving him a lift. Back under double figures, but Jack Hurdle will try to change that. Bad shot. Oh, maybe a foul on Benjamin gets away with one. Now we'll have no foul 
called the other way. They're letting them play, and Hurd will convert the layup. I don't think coaches will complain about letting them play, but they always feel they're letting the other team play and not my team play. Well, we've got excellent officials here. Mike Dean screaming right now. Tommy Lopes. Ron Holland injured on the floor. Holland, Holland slips on the floor, but he still is able to get the ball over to her for the easy leg. He might have pulled a hamstring. Well, a sal already without Paul Burke, their exciting freshman. Well, Ray Schultz is going to get some meaningful minutes now. We talk again about Milko Lieber's speedy. He's the one speedy like to get on the sidelines a little bit. Well, Schultz, not the wide body that uh, Lieberst is, and not, not the offensive threat at 6'9", 230. But he played well in limited time yesterday in the blowout against Fairfield. Well, yeah. we've seen Ray Schultz. He has played well. Good yeah. free throw shooter. Benneman inside to Matthews. Downing. Knocked away. Benneman recovers. No real flow so far to Sienna's offense. Rizoulis back out to Benneman. Downing from the corner. And Randy Woods with the rebound. LaSalle able to maintain this double-digit lead. Getting performances from Holland and Liebers. Four men and double figures for the Explorers. Woods only with 16, Heard with 12, but Holland and Liebers have contributed 10 apiece. Woods over Downing, who's now playing him, and continues to have his problems, but the rebound by Liebers, and he gets fouled. Now they're calling that foul on the shot, but after... Levers got hit, he passed the ball off. We get an opportunity to see that. He goes up strong for the shot, had no chance of taking the shot. So you see Levers get the rebound, good offensive rebound. Levers doing a good job on the glass. And watch him go up, and you tell me if he shoots this ball. Goes up, and then he kicks the ball kind of off. Why do you talk, uh, do you talk about it at halftime? The offensive, LaSalle had 11 offensive rebounds in the first half to only four for Siena. You know, we talked about that also in the first game today. You know, the offensive rebounding is crucial in a game like this. It gives you easy opportunities more than anything else. Leifers looking for point number 12. His high 19 against Siena earlier this year. And Gisudas with the rebound. Down by 12. They've trailed by as many as 13, but they can't seem to make a run to cut that deficit. Let's see if they can do it now. Benerman will cut it down. It's, it's the first time Dream has got the ball into the paint and made his own shot. Benneman has only five points, and remember, this guy is averaging 17 a game. Hasn't shot the ball much. Nope. Neubauer along the baseline. And another offensive rebound hunted down. They're killing him. Neubauer motioning to his teammates. Set up something maybe for Randy Woods off the ball. Leverse looking for Woods. He's trying to post up inside against Benneman. Bad shot. That's Another. a bad shot for Randy Woods. Woods now 6 for 17 from the field. Inside Matthews, a good look, and count the basket. Benneman with a fine pass. Taking advantage of the less experienced player there. They go inside on Ray Schultz. Schultz commits the foul. Blitz Wooten about to come in a ball game. Good pass inside. Good feed. Fed him right towards the basket. Schultz got caught on the bottom side. Matthews took the ball to Bacon. Schultz commits the foul. It's his second out on the team. It's the fourth team foul. As Lee Matthews, the junior from Buffalo, will go to the line. Randy Woods is going to have to heat it up a little bit for the sound now because they're going with the front court of Ray Schultz and Blitz Wooten, both Lieberson and Holland on the, on the bench. Big three-point play for Matthews. They've scored five in a row, and it's down to seven, Marty, the closest they've been in a long while. Ron Holland is in the locker room. And listen to the crowd. And Speedy only has four more players on his bench, including his son, Keith Morris. So the five guys you see on the floor are probably going to go a while. Neubauer to Woods. Hurd continues to struggle, and Wooten will be called for the foul. And the crowd really getting into the game right now. Jim Ryder went up for the rebound, number 20, trying to get to the ball, and Wooten gave him a shove. Has Let's go to Dave very long quickly to for a report in. on an injury. All right, thank you, Barry. Went into the uh, trainer's room in the back. 
and the LaSalle trainer says that Bron Holland pulled the groin muscle on his right side. There's a possibility he could come back, but Bron's in a lot of pain. Back to you guys. Thank you, Dave, and Holland's been a factor in this game with Woods struggling along with Hurd. He's done a great job inside. Down by seven. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Middleton. Oh, how big is that three-pointer? Good. Now, Speedy Morris knows he's going to get a timeout soon, a TV timeout, but he might want to call one to shut this crowd down a little bit. Four-point ball game. That 13-point lead down to four. Wooten to Randy Woods. Batted around. Matthews couldn't control it, and Jim Ryder has it. Whoop. Speedy arguing that there should have been a foul call. Benjamin. Schroeder. Too hard. He kind of shot it off one leg, too. Kind of rushed it there, both uh, on that possession. Yeah, the Siena Saints only down four, and this crowd is into this, baby. I think the Saints got caught up in the crowd a little bit themselves, the players. Woods missing. Good positioning by Matthews. Randy Woods is really having a difficult time shooting the basketball. In the corner, Ryder missing. Boy, yeah. Ryder makes that shot, this place might come down. Only averages four or five minutes of basketball game. Playing in the biggest game of the year. Three consecutive misses for Siena. You can see the shooting. Randy Woods will quiet the crowd for a moment. Yeah, how many guys would have the confidence to shoot that shot outside the three-point line of the NBA after missing probably ten in a row? Randy now shooting seven for 20. Look at that shot and a foul called inside as Benneman will go to the free throw line. The Ray Schultz doesn't have the quickness to get over and try to get in the way there. So Benneman is kind of quick for Randy Woods. I don't think Randy Woods does such a good job playing straight up defense anyway. Schultz has to get over quicker. No throw levers will replace Ray Schultz. At the line is Doremus Benneman. Only five points for the sophomore from Stratford, Connecticut. And at the line, he's an 86% free throw shooter. He gets a lot of free throws. He penetrates, over-penetrates at times, they feel. But right now, he can close the deficit. And he does for five points. Time out on the court. 10.37 to go. And they're loving their seat. The Nickabaka Arena. Yes. Yeah. So I dropped by my buddy Jack's house the other day. I find him with a strange expression on his face, which can only mean one thing. He's thinking. I'm tired of having to read everything to keep up with sports, he says. I'm no Evelyn Wood, you know. This from a man who thinks C Spot Run is a tongue twister. Hey, I said, there's one place you can get it all the sporting news. It's the only magazine that gives you baseball, football, hoops, and hockey 52 weeks a year. It's got stats like you've never seen and reports on every team, even off-season. To top it all off, the Sporting News has awesome special issues, and they don't cost you a penny more. Sounds like the Sporting News is all I need. So what's it going to cost me? Look, just call this toll-free number. You get a whole bunch of issues for just a few bucks. You can spread out payments, even charge it. Gee, Jack says, I can get it all in the Sporting News and get the best deal around? Ah, for a brief thrilling moment, the wind whistling between Jack's ears was still. <laughs> the Sporting News, more than just the score. A roll of Konica film, please. Konica? Konica. Blue box? Carl! Do we carry Konica? Konica? Konica. Hmm. Konica, right? Yes, Konica. From portrait to scenery to action, new Konica Super SR has the right film for the right shot. Oh. Konica. Anything else? New Konica Super SR color print film. Never heard of it? What better way to quiet the opposing crowd and have the anti-hero Randy Woods drill one from way downtown on the NBA line. And he drills it after missing so many. Only 7 of 20 on the day. He and Hurd combined 12 for 37. Not well, any of the three Siena LaSalle games have those two shooters shot the ball well. And that's why Siena's been in the game tonight, and they've been obviously winners the first two times. You see the second half field goal shooting, Siena 
Doing a good job, and LaSalle struggling again. Oh, my, and Jack Hurd, like Randy Woods, with the money's on the line. Just when you think you have him down, you hit <laughs> two threes, six points, boom. 62-54, eight-point ballgame. A lot of time left. Jim Ryder getting surprising playing time, as you said, Whitey. He'll try the three short. Ryder will sit down soon, though. It's nice of Mike to get him some time, you know, considering he's one of the deep, deep subs. Well, Bindling Meyer did a good job shooting from outside. You might think that he might be seeing some playing time here in the second half. And now Lee Matthews gets up off the ball. He'll come back. It in. was interesting. I was just watching Ryder, and he he saw Mike Dean go to the bench, and he looked he, he looked up to see who was coming in. I, I don't know that he realized, but I'm sure Lee Matthews is coming in for him. They're playing with three guards now anyway. Benjamin in the lane. Tapped it up. Levers lost it out of bounds. Sienna not shooting well from outside, and we mentioned they're not a good three-point shooting team. They're two for 15 from three-point range tonight. They're better than that. The Schroeder's a key guy shooting the threes along with Benerman, and Benerman's not having a good shooting day. This guy, Joey Middleton, who's in the ball game right now, can shoot the three. He'll try one, I thought, there, but no one passes it up. Schroeder trying to force it inside. Another situation there, Barry, where as soon as Schroeder got the ball, he normally would shoot that thing. Shot clock, plenty of time. Mike Dean's club down by eight. Schroeder will try the three. Schroeder with nine points. He shoots 35% from three-point range. Again, pretty long three-point attempt that time by Bruce Schroeder. And it's stacked to a five-point ball game. And again, the crowd becomes a factor. Newbauer. Woods posting Bennerman down low. Hurd will drive on Middleton. Miss gets the follow miss. And look at Middleton try to knock it off. Hurd and he did. Great play that time by Joe Middleton. A lot of contact under the basket that you were kind of just waiting for the whistles to go and blow a timeout. Can you see if there's any contact here? Watch her take the foul right there. He hit him on the elbow. And here's Middleton making a real heads-up play. Throws the ball off. Speedy Morris raving at one of the officials, Tommy Lopes. Well, the ball also hit grass on the ground, but I'm not sure. It's difficult to see who it hit first. Speedy Morris is oh, a little bit upset. Coaches tend to get a little more upset in Morris. Down by five. Middleton off. Wooten the rebound. Big rebound by the freshman. Flitz Wooten's going to be a terrific player in this league. Good freshman for Manhattan went down, though, to Mom Marshall. He won't be playing in the second game tonight. That's another one coming up. Neubauer. Good rebound by McKinney. Schroeder and a foul on Hurd. And Speedy Morris can't believe it. The fouls that are being called against his team. Joe Mahalik, also up off the bench, is fine assistant. He's yelling at us. Hey, you see the play. Kind of a ticky-tack. Blocking foul, they're trying to settle the game down a little bit. It'll be a one and one situation for Schroeder. And Siena is the best free throw shooting team in the conference, Whitey. 74% from the line. And Bruce Schroeder is one of the better ones. Looking for point number 10. <laughs> we helped Just him out. Just put the kiss of death on him again, Whitey. Heard, by the way, has three fouls. And the team is over the limit with seven. Eight minutes to go. LaSalle by five. Hurd. Three-pointer. Wow. What a shot that was by Jack Hurd. 20 points for Hurd. And the lead now is eight. Benjamin forced the pass. Intercepted by Levers. Woods chased by Schroeder. Schroeder with a block on that bad ankle. That was a great play by Bruce Schroeder. Just to catch up and, you know, He's tough as nails. Just to go up and go after that ball. He never knows when he goes up in the air if he's going to come down and that's going to be his last play. Good pass by Levers. Just get the ball out. Let Woods go get it. You knew Woods wasn't going to back it out. Good, hard, clean play by Bruce Schroeder. And Schroeder's upset now because he's going to come out in favor of Stewart Downing. And the senior sitting down right now, hobbling off out of Marshall, Michigan. Was an all max second team choice last year. First team selection. This year, Randy Woods, an excellent free throw shooter, will get another one. He's about 82%, third in the league. And not a good day. 20 points, 
Five rebounds. McKinney with the rebound. Wish I could have bad days like that. They had cut it to five, and now they trail by nine. McKinney wisely give it up to Downing. They're showing Sand a little something different now. Go to the little zone. Middleton guarded tightly by Hurd. Knocked away from McKinney. And quickly, Matt Grass will come up off the bench and probably come in for McKinney. Good play. Speedy Morris trying to settle him down there. Jack Hurd holding the ball in the backcourt, waiting for the action to go past him. Neubauer against Middleton. Behind the screen, Randy Woods looking inside. Matthews tapped it away. Two carols with the pass. Andy Grizzoulis and Matt Grass were about ready to come in, but we have a timeout on the floor. Seven minutes to go, and the Explorers have opened up a nine-point lead again. Now, you can get every magic moment all in one incredible video. Magic Johnson, always showtime. It's free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated, the nation's number one sports weekly. Call this toll-free number now to follow the leader up and down the court from high school to college to the pros. Magic keeps winning with a spirit and style that changed the NBA. Don't miss the rookies' first NBA championship. Enjoy all the battles with the legendary Larry Bird as they fight for the last shot. Magic down the middle, just what I thought. A hook shot at 12. Call now to subscribe or renew. Get your free video plus 54 issues of SI, including the swimsuit issue, for only $1.29 an issue. Save over 55% off the cover price. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. The magic of Urban Johnson will always be something special. Treasure it forever. And every week, enjoy all the emotion and drama of sports in Sports Illustrated. During the offseason, the Mets added some big names. Bonilla, Murray, Randolph, Saberhagen, Torbor. Now it's your turn to stick with Sports Channel for 75 exclusive games. From their home opener at Shea to the late season Bennett race. When you think Mets, think Sports Channel. Plus, the NHL catches fire this spring. Check out our exclusive coverage of the Stanley Cup playoffs. So slide into the 92 season with Hojo and the rest of the new look Mets. When you think Mets, think Sports Channel. Barry Landers will Whitey Rigsby as we look at the Siena huddle gathered around their coaching staff. Their club trailing right now, 66 to 57, with seven minutes to go. Well, the quote of Mike Dean on Bruce Schroeder, I don't know how he played. He's got more guts than brains, and everyone knows about his academic ability. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't sound like something Mike would say. Well, right now, Schroeder on the bench. Levers pass batted away by Grass, but the milkman from Holland recovers. Remember Bruce Schroeder, as we mentioned, academic All-American along with Jack Hurd. Hurd behind the pick of Levers. Oh, what a big shot. I tell you, when he makes a shot, he really is a pretty shooter. He shoots the ball much. It, it, it looks prettier than when um, Randy Woods does. Woods just has a little bit better range. Downing pulling up for the shot off the glass, and Downing has played a solid game, averaging six a game. He's in double figures with ten. Stuart Downing's another player I think will be a star in this league in years to come. Super defensive player. Great look that time by Woods, and Leverse finished it. 71-59, a 13-point lead, and timeout taken. Mike Dean had only one timeout remaining. And we've got timeout with 6.09 to go. And the Explorers have opened up a 12-point lead. We were all tied up on the Delacorte case, unable to identify the mystery plot. Luckily, Louis was back, a Freedom Zoom camp. With Minolta's unique eye start, Freedom starts zooming before it even meets your eye. So, when you can't get to the picture, Freedom zooms the picture to you. And fast. Shoot! Look at this. It's our secretary. Looks like she takes more than dictation. Americans choose the freedom to zoom. Only from the mind of Minolta. Albany, the capital of New York State, in the capital Saratoga region, discover its many advantages. From historical architecture to today's futuristic Empire State Plaza, join us for our many family events and festivals along the scenic Hudson River. Professional sports abound and are one of the many year-round attractions. Or spend an evening enjoying the performing arts, from Broadway-quality shows to symphony orchestras. Be our guest. For information, call 1-800-622-8464.
It's unthinkable. But hundreds of New York children grow up unhealthy, uneducated, unemployable. Do you know what this means to New York's future? It's unthinkable. But if you think you can't do anything about it, you're wrong. Foster parents can turn things around for kids. So don't sit back. Call the Foster Care Network, 212-643-0178. So nine to go as play resumes right here with LaSalle holding a 12 point lead. Whitey, LaSalle's lead had been cut to 4, 56, 52, and then Woods and Hurd, who have been missing so many shots, buried a couple of three pointers. As we look at the All Mac team, a couple of guys we just mentioned Randy Woods right there, along with Jack Hurd, Kevin Green, Keith Bullock, you'll see later, Brian Clifford, Bruce Schroeder, you're watching, and of course, Henderson. You know, it's an old statement that big players make big plays. And that's what those two guys just did there. Lee Matthews trying to make a big play inside. And Leehurst upset. Very emotional player, Milko Leehurst, the young man from Holland, isn't he? We've said that time and again, and he really is. And here you talk about a big player. Lee Matthews is a guy from Mike Dean that has to start making some plays here. Well, you see Blitz Wooten going hard after the ball. And leave us not forget, Randy Woods left with five minutes to go in the first half with three personals. Still has three personals. Blitz Wooten picked up his fourth foul. And Matthews, not a good free throw shooter, will hit that one. Well, all they need for you to do is talk about their free throw shooting. And they'll do the opposite of whatever you say. <laughs> Matthews shoots around 66%. But you see, Ooh. he's shooting well from the line tonight. But now that was four ugly. for six, that's <laughs> about 66. Yeah, that was, that's exactly right. <laughs> My math isn't too bad, buddy. It's been a long day. Get a out. long night still ahead. <laughs> Don't forget Manhattan coming up against Iona in our second MAC Conference semifinal. A lot of basketball left here on Sports Channel. Randy Woods going baseline with a runner. Matthew, it was going to be short, I believe, and Matthews blocked it. Silly, silly play. That's what Mike Dean thinks. That, that ball probably would have hit the rim, but not by much. Goal tending the call. 22 for Randy Woods, and Mike Dean holding his hands up on his head. You can see him. It looks like he needs a pillow. <laughs> He's got more hair than you, though, uh, Whitey. But his is gray. Middleton. I guess he should. Uh, I guess I'd go for some gray hair. <laughs> and Whitey trying to reach out and grab that loose ball. No more. If you look at turnovers, 10 turnovers for Siena led to 18 points. And LaSalle not turning it over, even though they're missing a lot of shots. Benneman answers right back. They needed that basket, Whitey, very much. LaSalle hasn't had a turnover in the entire second half of basketball. Siena doesn't have the mark that they're not a team that's going to force a lot of turnovers. Well, not that quick. Speak to the devil, you help them out. There's a turnover. <laughs> I'm telling you what, Barry, you it's should go there. into scouting or something here. They don't, last night, you asked Jack Armstrong if Siena forces turnovers. Because last night they did, but they're playing a different style yeah, today. And they're playing a much different team. We have to get a ball. shot of Speedy Morris. We talked about him stripping last night. He's down to just his shirt and his pants. Will he has the tie off, has the jacket off. Good save by Grizzulis. Benjamin for three. Matthews going up for the rebound, but Hurd had good positioning. Hurd nearly lost it. And with 4.40 to go, up by 11. LaSalle will call timeout. Well, the Explorers. Speedy Morris has the jacket off, the shirt tie loosened. And what's next, Whitey? Well, this is just the semifinals. If he gets to the finals, it could be scary tomorrow. We might have to rate this thing other than, you know, uh, PG. And he told me he lost some weight. But I thought Jack Armstrong came up with a great line. We should do one of those ultra slim fast things for the coaches. Well, I might be able to get in for announcers, Whitey. <laughs> and you're, you're a little... Uh, I'm young, though. That's right. I'll start working out right after the season. I tell my wife. Hope you've enjoyed tomorrow. <laughs> Our coverage here on Sports Channel. I know Whitey and I have had a ball doing the telecast this year. Sienna has no timeouts left, by the way, and LaSalle has two. Barry Landers and Whitey Riggs be heard courtside. And let's go to uh, Dave Sims right now with a report. All right, thank you, Barry. Uh, the report on uh, Bron Holland, he's done for the night. He's got the uh, strain of the right, uh, right, uh, 
right thigh muscle, and it's a groin muscle, actually. That's what I was groping for there, but he's done for the game, and his status is up in the air for any other uh, action that LaSalle might have. And Mike Dean, in his previous timeout, was saying that he wants his team to use all 40, at least 40 of the 45 seconds to get a good shot. That was something he wanted. He really tried to impress upon his club. Back to you, Barry. All right, Neubauer with it. It's going to be difficult to use all that time on the clock as the clock runs down because the clock is going to be firmly on the side of the Explorers. No basket. Randy Woods fouled before the shot. Sienna going to have to start fouling and sending LaSalle to the line. Whitey down by 11. Still a little early for that, but Sienna, remember, has no timeouts. If they burn all three timeouts, and, you know, Dave was talking about that injury to Brian Holland. I don't know if that's going to have much of an effect tonight, but it certainly will tomorrow night. That's the fifth team foul. Hurd finds Leavehurst. He's not 100%. He, this is a banged up ball court. It kind of sounds like we're at a viewing now or something because it's awful quiet in this place. Well, Sienna needs a turnover here. Sal going to that delay they went in the first half when they didn't have Randy Woods. Again, Woods just with three personals. Hasn't fouled in the second half. He's forced some five of his seconds. offense. Five-second violation against Randy Woods. As a senior, Randy Woods has to be aware of the count. You know, you can always pick up the dribble. You pick up the dribble, you get five more seconds. Now they need a basket out of this possession. Time becoming a factor. 3.50 to go, down by 11. Remember, they're not a good shooting club from the outside. Brazulis over Leverse. Big basket. He didn't wait 45 seconds there. And this one, it hurts not having Bruce Schroeder on the floor as far as, especially on offense, when you need to get a good shot, you need to be patient. Brazulis 5 for 5 from the field. 11 travel. Oh, travel. Oh, it's Speedy Morris. Upset. He knew his freshman travel, though. We talked about they only had two turnovers the entire game, none the second half. Now they have three on the last four possessions. Nine-point ball game with 3.24 to go. Downing, guarded by Neubauer. This is Benjamin against Woods. Grisoulis. He hasn't missed tonight. Inside Matthews against Levers. Holland got a piece of him and a foul call. That might just do it to Mike Dean because he's really upset about that call. Offensive foul called by Lee Matthews. And they're looking at the big guy, Lee Matthews, out of Buffalo. That, that play really hurt. See what you got here. Lee Matthews takes it. Levers in there. Good acting job by Levers. I can't believe Lee Matthews could that easily knock down Milko Levers. At the 16 foul, here's Wooten who traveled his last time down. Nine point lead with under three minutes to go. Neubauer. The South trying, trying to get a little conservative with the ball. Inside to Wooten to leave Hurst. You know, that's as much the key to this game as anything else. Any three pointers anybody took is the fact that the South's been able to get some easy opportunities in those inside people. 15 points for Leave Hurst. He's played well in the tournament. Short again passes up the shot. Middleton will take this one. Tough luck. Good rebound. Matthews goes up. Gets fouled by Levers. Oh, boy. Milko Levers at 6'9", about 240. Only the second personal on Milko, and he was able to get the ball. You send Lee Matthews, as we said, only a 67% of the free throw line. You don't give up the basket. Schroeder sits down. Rizzolis comes in. So Lee Matthews, who averaged 7.5 points last year, and it's up to, to 14 this year with 10 points tonight. This could be Bruce Schroeder's last game in Albany. What a career he's had. Mike Dean has had some great players. Last year, Mark Brown, player of the year, playing for the Albany Patroons here in the CBA. You think Sienna, uh, was such an attraction last year for the NIT that if, if, they, were, if, they, if they lose this game and don't get to the NCAA tournament, they would have a real good shot to get to the NIT and probably get a home game or two because they have a tremendous following up in northern New York. I would think so, Whitey. They lose this one. They'd be 19 and 10. They played a tough schedule outside of the conference. And certainly, as you said, they drew well. They had about 14 or 15,000 fans here last year when they played UMass. Yeah, they played UMass in a difficult game. They beat South Carolina at home. They had at least two home games in the uh, NIT last year. Milko Levers. 15 points going to the free throw line. I think he's been their most valuable player tonight. Although Woods and Hurd have hit a couple of big three pointers, I think without his contribution tonight, LaSalle might not be a possible winner and headed into the uh, finals. If we keep the camera on Speedy, see if we get to see him bless himself too, like we had John Miller in the first game. Leifers' career high is 19 points. He's got a shot at that. Going for point number 17, he's got it. I do agree with you about Milko Leifers. I think he's had a terrific ball game. 
Well, it's a 13-point deficit. Downing, Middleton. Bindlinger has to be ready to deliver the ball. He has to be ready to shoot. Matthews with a turnaround. Remember, no timeouts for Siena. They can't stop the clock. 11-point lead. Hurd will be fouled. That's the wrong guy to foul. He's an excellent free throw shooter. Yeah, Hurd's one of those guys, even after he fouled and the clock stops, he still wants to get a shot up. Any, any way to practice that shooting. Well, Jack Hurd, a Mac preseason first team all star pick from last year. Average 16 last year. Averaging about 18 this year. And there's Jim Ryder, who got a lot of uh, valuable minutes in the first half, replacing Joe Middleton. Give credit to Mike Dean. This was a young club. They had a lot of rebuilding. They lost a couple of people. Mike Brown, who was going to be their two guard, averaged about 13 points last year. Out medically redshirted this year. They yeah, no one home. expected them. This was a rebuilding year, and he's going to win 19 games anyway in a rebuilding year. You have to be, most coaches would love that in a non-rebuilding year. You know, Mike Dean, in his six years, has had a tremendous record. 137 and 51. What a mark that has been. Bindlingmeyer. One of the good-looking freshmen on this team. Spins it in and out, and Wooten the rebound. See another freshman, Blitz Wooten, terrific job. So LaSalle, beaten twice this year. Trying to break it up here, Ryder. Matthews, they need three here. Matthews will try a two. Goes up and gets fouled. But Lee Matthews was playing this physical earlier. Whitey, well, Sienna might not have been giving up a lot of those rebounds in that first half. Yeah, he's being real aggressive now, especially offensively, going after the offensive glass. But like I said, I think what hurt them really was the defensive end, getting too many easy opportunities to the big people for LaSalle. They really need to kick the ball out to Bidlinger there to go for three. They need three points right now. Ooh, oh, Jack Hurd got a lot of ball there. Again, Lee Matthews to the free throw line, not a good free throw shooter. Four for nine at the line. So I guess the numbers don't lie, Whitey. You went, you know, initially, he was four for five, and he's missed. Not in March. Four. Well, by the, when you get to March, those, those numbers are honest. 13 for Matthews. Point below his season average. Neubauer finds Wooten open. A minute and a half to go. He explores by nine. Wooten back out. Well, Sal's been a hot club, Whitey, down the stretch. Should they win tonight, they will have won 10 of their last 12. There were only losses to Manhattan at the, uh, at the and buzzer and to Loyola right at the end by two. And Loyola, which was such a hot team at that time, Blitz Wooten, now that's the guy that the Saints want to foul. Wooten only a 50% free throw shooter. Like we said, the kind of shooter you are in March is the kind of shooter you are. <laughs> Coming back in the ball game, Andy Grizzoulis, he's had a couple of nice ball games for Siena. They play with a lot of emotion, some of these guys, and particularly Grizzoulis. You know, Wooten misses the free the free throw here. The Saints come down and get three. Now they can't call timeout, but they can get themselves in the game with that three-point shot. The game is never over. Let's Wooten uses the entire basket, backboard, everything he could. First point for the freshman who's an outstanding athlete, was Mac Rookie of the Week a couple of times this year. But Speedy Morris gonna have to wonder about his depleted forces going into tomorrow. And if Holland doesn't play, maybe that offsets. You know, the Manhattan big man, if Manhattan gets to the final. Heard with the steal. Randy Woods trying to finish it off here, dishing off to Lieber, who has tied his career high with 19 points. We have seen that all game. Randy Woods dishing off, Lieber's finishing the play. So the milkman has delivered. <laughs> I was waiting for that line. I knew you'd come up with something like that. <laughs> Betterman pulling up. Too little, too late, perhaps. The end of this game will be sped up because of the fact that Mike Dean doesn't have any TOs left. And Hurd with under a minute to go. Jack Hurd wants to hold the ball because he wants to go to the free throw line because he's the best free throw shooter. <laughs> New Bauer, almost a 10-second violation. Wooten, they should have fouled Wooten. They wanted to foul Wooten. LaSalle's going to call timeout. And Mike Dean is looking at Speedy Morris. Like, why are you calling timeout, he's saying. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he's got a look. If we get a shot of Mike Dean, he is staring down at his opposite That's number. interesting. That's a little interesting. Little by play by play. I was, left, I was about to say four play. I don't think it fit. 32 seconds left on the shot clock, 42 seconds on the game clock. Not sure what the coach would be talking to his players about at this point in time. Whitey, let's take a look at the all-Metro Atlantic rookie team. 
Arum Ramey of St. Peter's, along with Craig Wise, were co-rookie of the year in the back. Jamal Marshall, who won't be playing tonight in the semifinal game against Iona. Paul Burke out with appendectomy. Stuart Downing, you're watching tonight. Brian Pendleman, good-looking freshman forward from Loyola. And Brent Kell of Niagara will be playing for Jack Armstrong. I, I think Downing is really, as I said, going to have a good career. And I think Blitz Wooten just didn't get the playing time some of those other guys had. Otherwise, he might have been right on that, that team also. Interesting, we get a look at Mike Dean. If Mike Dean continues to look down as he does down at Speedy Morris. You know, as we saw Lee Hurst emotional on the bench, it's rare that you get European players to play with that kind of emotion, both in all sports, in hockey and uh, certainly in basketball. Yeah, they're generally a little more colorless without being a, I don't know, a basher of sorts. Inside Keith Morris and count the basket. I've said it before, oh, to be the coach's son, right? <laughs> what do they do? They call a timeout and they ring his bell. They call his number for him to get a shot off the, off the out-of-bounds play. So Keith Morris, the senior, will go to the line. Benerman committed the foul. Only his first foul. Benerman played the, almost the entire game. Now, I, I think probably the reason Speedy called the timeout was to get, to get Morris and his son Morris and, Keith Morris along with Ray Schultz in the ballgame. What a night for the milkman, Milko Levers. Tied his career high, had seven rebounds, and was a force from the very outset of this game. Uh, if you were to pick a player of the game, you'd have to say it was Milko Levers. Now, Hurd had 24 points, but shot only 8 of 22. Woods at 22, but also 8 of 22. Bindlingmeyer missing, and Hooten skies for the rebound. Way high for that rebound. So after being held to 65 points and 64 in their two losses against Sienna. LaSalle scores what they usually score, Whitey, around 82 points. That's the kind of game you want to play. And make it 84 for Jack Hurd, as he now has 24. Make it 26 for Hurd, rather. Good ball game by Jack Hurd. Middleton banks it in. They don't have to inbound the ball now. Eight points for Middleton, and this one will end right now. So the Explorers of LaSalle, let's see if they shake hands here. It's Mike Morris and Mike D. Where's Mike? There he is. Didn't seem like he was a little bit of a dead fish. Now the final time they'll play each other in the MAC Conference. LaSalle and Siena. And the Explorers, who won the regular season title four years in a row and represented the MAC. For so many years in a row until last year, they were beaten in the semifinals. And eventually, St. Peter's represented the conference. It's now LaSalle's turn to try for another title. Here, they're back in the final again. We don't know the situation with Ron Holland. We do know the situation with Marshall. He is out for the tournament. Ron Holland, maybe he'll be back tomorrow. Maybe he won't. It'll be an interesting matchup. If Manhattan can get past a very talented Iona team right after this next early tonight. Earlier tonight, and I know we have some viewers in Philadelphia watching our telecast. The LaSalle Explorers women's basketball team was beaten 73-71 by St. Peter's to win the MAC championship. And St. Peter's will advance to the NCAA playoffs. So that's the story. LaSalle 84, Siena 71. Coming up next, we've got Manhattan and Iona. Stay tuned. General Nutrition Center's Pro Performance Amino...